Downs the Dukes, aided by Jared McCain. His second NCAA tournament game, he pumps in 30 points on 8 of 11 from beyond the arc. Matches a season high, 8 made threes, had 15 in the first round against Vermont, 45 points in two games, and Duke downs the Dukes 93-55, a 38-point win. Jeremy Roach got injured in this game, dislocated left pinky. Uh, he's okay. He finished with 15 points, six assists. Uh, Kyle Filipowski getting involved, three points in the win over Vermont. Bounces back with 14 points, five rebounds, four assists, couple steals. And Duke is moving on to the Sweet 16, their second Sweet 16 appearance in the last three years. Remember, they made the Final Four a couple years ago. Coach K's final season. Now looking to get back to the Final Four with John Shire in Phoenix. And this was a statement. Back here with Chip Patterson. And Chip, I mean, my goodness. Duke overwhelmed the Dukes. We thought maybe JMU, who came in on a 14-game winning streak, would have some sort of power to stay in it. They did not. And this was over at halftime. Yeah, they uh, had their confidence zapped. I mean, you know, we, this was a JMU team that had more bounce, more energy than Wisconsin in that first round win. And there was a tone setting that happened at the beginning of this game. It was Kyle Filipowski being really physical down low. JMU's not a team that has a whole lot of size. And what size they did have, TJ Bickerstaff, even Terrence Edwards, who has to play big sometimes, foul, 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 foul. Oh, no. Mark Byington has to go deep into the bench with players that should not be playing against the Duke Blue Devils. You, you compare that and match it with what you got from Jared McCain. Just absolute uh, on fire from behind the arc. This was the best game that Duke has played this season. If Duke could copy and paste this to the rest of the games that they played this season, they would have been a one seed. They would not have been a four seed. If Duke can copy and paste this to the rest of the games they would play in the NCAA tournament, then Duke will be headed on to the Final Four. The issue is the consistency, but I want to celebrate the Blue Devils because I think that they understood the assignment, and the assignment was to put JMU away early and then allow the rest of the roster to breathe. And when you see Sean Stewart in there uh, getting some thunderous dunks late, Mark Mitchell had a lot of good minutes. I have been concerned about the way that that rotation has you know, been trimmed up a little bit as the season has gone on, which, you know, isn't right, isn't anything unusual. But Duke is showing that its wealth of talent can actually show up in March. Didn't always show up in January. Didn't always show up in February. But here, when the money's on the table, Sweet 16 bid hanging in the balance, you've got a Cinderella out there, and Duke called midnight. Your carriage is a pumpkin. Blue Devils onto the Sweet 16. Yeah, Jared McCain uh, with a performance for all time in Duke history here. As you see, two points shy of Zion Williamson's tournament record for a single game. 30 points on 8 of 11, matches a season high. The moment is not too big for these freshmen at Duke. And they've got some veteran presence there. But when you see a freshman, and it's not like outlandish because a lot of talent goes and plays at Duke. And when you see Jared McCain get looks like this, uh, this can be tough to beat when you got a guy like this. Yeah, and that's when John Shire and the rest of the staff can tell a story of, of Justice Winslow, a player who at the time was maybe the fourth or fifth player for Duke, stepping up in the Sweet 16 in the Elite Eight to help the Blue Devils advance. You can talk about a Tyus Jones, a Trey Jones. You can point to some of these freshmen that were not necessarily the top build player on the squad, but when their number was called, they showed up. Uh, that is the standard that has been uh, established in Durham, is that when you come in, you need to sometimes settle into your role, but when you have the opportunity, when your team needs you to be able to match that little five-star prospect rating that was assigned to you that says, we think you can blossom into a first-round NBA draft pick, well, I'll tell you what, Duke's freshmen looked like NBA draft picks here on Sunday. And shouts to JMU you. Uh, I mean, one heck of a season. They came into this game on a 14-game winning streak, champions of the Sun Belt. They won 32 games this season. That was tied for the most in Division One with UConn entering the day. I mean, you want to talk about a school that is on the rise. 
football program, yeah, I was gonna say basketball being... pro. I mean, JMU has this is they have arrived at football, but this is the official like, hey, we are here. We are a division one program. And while we're giving flowers to him, how about that whole university community? How much purple did you see in Brooklyn? Yeah, that was nice. Normally, we think that New York, whether it's Madison Square Garden or the Barclays Center, oh, that's where all the Dukies from New Jersey go. But this was JMU making their presence felt. I'll tell you, there's something special that's happening in Harrisonburg. There's a real commitment to making sure that the Dukes are competitive. You mentioned in college football where they have just hit the ground running at the FBS level. Uh, obviously, in men's basketball, they've been able to do it as well. They understand that when you have that kind of athletic success, it is only going to further empower your entire university. Um, what is it? Your athletic department is the front porch of the university. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that JMU has perfect furniture, well manicured uh, foliage. It looks exquisite there in Harrisonburg. Yeah, you just uh, got to hope if you're a JMU alum or a fan of the school that they can keep Mark Byington because his name has been thrown around for some high major programs. And of course, we will have the latest on that. Our Matt Norlander has been tracking the coaching carousel, broke the news of Dusty May to Michigan, uh, Tucker DeVries, now to West Virginia, perhaps Mark Byington on the move. But for now, he had a heck of a season at James Madison leading the NCAA tournament. They come up short against Duke. Duke, uh, as most teams do, who are just not as talented. And, and Duke is the more talented team in this one. 93-55, a 38-point win into the Sweet 16 for the 29th time. That's second most all-time since the tournament expanded to 32 teams in 1975, trailing only North Carolina. Isn't that appropriate? They're tobacco road rivals. They're bitter rivals separated by nine miles. They're separated by two in terms of Sweet 16 appearances but both of those schools into the Sweet 16.